Today I am going to be trying to make a wooden spoon without the use of metal tools. A spoon isn't the most interesting subject, but it uses a lot of different techniques, so I'll be able to do some proper experimenting. So I've got a piece of pine here that I got from the wood lot, and I'm just going to cut it to length. Now it's a heck of a lot of work trying to cut through a piece of wood without metal tools, so I'm just going to burn it to save myself the trouble. This section near the end is full of knots, and I'm not going to be able to work that, so it can just burn off entirely. The branch is a lot longer than it needs to be, so I can just burn it off with impunity. I don't have to worry about being precise here. Once the outside was good and charred, I took it out of the fire and chipped off all of the charred wood with my antler axe. The antler axe was very effective for this. Then back in the fire to char off the newly exposed wood. Blowing on the fire to increase the temperature speeds the process up a lot, but it does kind of defeat the point of saving effort. It's also easy to inhale some smoke if you're not being careful. Now I'm making a shallow cut just behind the knots. This will sort of funnel the burn into removing the section I don't want. Now that it's charred, what I'm going to do next is just scrape away at the cut with a piece of wood. I've found this is easier than taking it out of the fire, putting it out, and then chipping away at it with the axe. It's almost burnt all the way through now, so I'm just going to break it with the axe. And there we go, that's the waste section cut off. I'm just going to burn the ragged edge to clean it up. The stick is still much longer than it needs to be, so I'm going to make a shallow cut with my axe to start burning off another section. I should have started the cut a heck of a lot further back. I didn't leave myself much room for error, and the burning is not precise. Oh well, you live you learn, and there's always next time. You've already seen this process, so I'll just skip ahead to where I break it. It's bloody close now, so I'm just going to whack it against a stump to snap what little is holding it together. It wasn't quite close enough, and the impacts plus the burning caused it to split in half. This is fine though, I needed to split it in half anyway. If it hadn't split of its own accord, I would have had to insert a wedge in the top with a mallet. So here are my two halves. I'm going to work these a little bit to decide which one is better. Firstly, I'm just going to scrape off all of the charred wood with a flint scraper. It works very well, as you can see. Now I'm using an antler knife to split off any loose sections of wood. The antler knife works reasonably well for scraping off the charred wood, but I think the flint scraper works a lot better. I'm trying to use the flint scraper as a gouge to actually start shaping the wood. This was a bad idea, I broke the tip. Flint is not good against impacts. So instead of that, to clean up the tip, I'm going to use my old-fashioned belt sander, which is just a rough block of granite. In addition to rounding off the tips, I'm going to grind the face of it flat. This is going to be the top of my spoon. This is relatively flat and smooth. It doesn't need to be perfect for this stage. Now I'm using the corner of my grinder to start to define the bowl of the spoon. Just starting a shallow little divot where the bowl of the spoon will eventually become the handle. All this grinding takes a heck of a long time. When I'm making things, I almost invariably use the belt sander instead. You might call this cheating, and rightfully so, but the wood doesn't know whether it's being abraded by muscle or electricity. I've got the cut started, so let's change tools. This is a wedge-shaped lump of coarse granite. I'm just going to use it like a saw. Because it's got a much narrower point of contact than the big block, this will help things go a little bit faster. A little bit faster still isn't saying much. This still took a heck of a long time. Well, that's good enough for me, I think. Let's go separate the handle now. I'm going to use an antler chisel to split off the unnecessary bits of the handle. I should have done this on a stump rather than a stone. I blunted my chisel a little bit. I guess I was just too lazy to move the camera. Willing to spend two hours grinding a piece of wood against a rock, but too lazy to spend 30 seconds moving a camera. Such a hypocrite. 
Well, that's pretty close. Let's clean it up a little bit. I'm using a flint knife to just take off all the corners and the loose bits. You have to use a flint knife very differently from a steel knife. With a steel knife you cut in and then lever out. With a flint knife you just have to scrape along the surface, like with a cabinet scraper. If you try and lever with it, you're just going to chip the edge. Now just doing a little bit more scraping to more clearly define it. Hours of fun. Now I'm going to start shaping the bowl. I've got it clamped in my old-fashioned vise, and I'm just going to carve a hole in the top with a bow drill. It's very different drilling with flint bits. You have to be very careful and use very little pressure or you'll just crush the bit. The bow drill is only effective to a certain depth, after which the hole comes up too quickly. The stuff can't spill over the top. Once it becomes more difficult, I'm not going to go any further. So I've drilled seven shallow holes in a hex pattern. I should have drilled more, but I broke three drill bits from lack of experience, so I got frustrated and moved on. Now I'm scooping up an ember from my fire over top of the drilled holes. Now I'm just holding it in place with a stick and blowing on it. Blowing on it will make the ember burn hotter and keep it alive, otherwise it'll just go out. Once the ember goes out, I take it away and assess the damage, scraping away any charred sections to speed up the burn. Then I rinse and repeat until the burn has reached the required depth. Hardwood embers are better than softwood embers for this. They burn longer and hotter. They also weigh a little bit more, so they're harder to blow away. The simple act of scraping will round off the corners of your scraper, making it useful for carving the bowl. When you're blowing on the embers, when you take a breath, you want to turn your head away, otherwise you're just going to get a mouthful of smoke. If you get a little fire going in the bottom of the bowl, you can take away your ember and just blow on the spoon itself. You should also be aware that sparks can sometimes jump off of the embers, just to make life interesting. So we've got a problem here. The burning has created a crack in the wood. I guess this means it wasn't dry enough when I started. I tried to do a bit of finish work, but it just made things worse, so I'm going to start over from the beginning. Skip back to where we left off. I'm also going to skip most of the finish work, as it's just more grinding against a stone. So here's the version 2. A little more effort and experience goes a long way, doesn't it? The granite didn't leave a very nice finish, so I'm just going over it with the stone knife to try and clean it up. This is not an ideal tool, as the serrated edge digs in unevenly. I gouged it a couple times. So instead of that, I'm going to do a bit of decoration with the stone knife. I'm just going to saw back and forth to carve a couple of lines into the spoon handle. I'm quite pleased with how effective the stone knife is for this. It works just like a needle file. Yeah, that'll do nicely. Now I'm using a slightly concave flint flake to clean up the handle a little bit. Just get off all of those rough little fibers. It's one of the only nice things about flint is that when you bust it up you get a lot of different tools. Once I've finished cleaning it up, I'm using an antler spike to buff the wood, compressing the fibers, which will make it shinier, smoother, and a little bit more water repellent. It seemed important to me to compress the inside of the bowl, as before it's quite spongy. In theory, this will help me keep it cleaner, but I don't know. Maybe it's better to leave it without compressing it. It made all the ridge lines stand up proud. Maybe I should have used a finer grained piece of wood, but what have you. At least it looks neat with the exaggerated grain. Now I'm just going to finish buffing the rough edges and corners around the bowl. And there we go, I think I'm pretty much done. One final thing, I'm going to give the whole spoon a coating of walnut oil. This will presumably make it more water resistant. Once it's applied, I'm just going to leave it to dry in the sun and then apply another coat in a couple of days. So here is the finished product. That's pretty good. Not bad for something I made without metal. Now I just need some soup and I'd be good to go. Thanks for watching.